Are you dreaming of driving around in a Mazda MX-5? But what you really need is a Mazda MPV? I have an interesting compromise for you. This week I'm test driving a 2006 Mazda 6 wagon. This one specifically is a GT. So beginning of the price range is $26,995 all the way up to $38,195 for this particular example. Like I said, it's a GT. So what does that give you? In this case, six-speed automatic transmission, navigation, 18-inch wheels, and a few body extensions, the bottom and the spoiler. The reason why I say that the Mazda 6 is an interesting compromise is because not only does it look sleek, very good, with the body accessories, the 18-inch wheels and everything, it actually drives very, very nicely. It's got a great chassis, very nice suspension setup, very precise steering, good feedback, it feels good, firm brake pedal, so it's quick stopping distances, good response from the pedal, and even though this is probably the sixth or fifth or sixth Mazda 6 that I drive, I was never very impressed with the 3 liter V6 engine located under the hood, which is the only engine, by the way, available on the wagon for the sedan and the sport, the hatchback version. There is a 2.3 liter inline four cylinder that develops 160 horsepower. This is a six speed automatic transmission. It's geared even more aggressively than the five speed manual. And it seems to have transformed the whole powertrain of this car. It now moves. It'll rev to the red line. The red line begins at 6,500 RPM, but it'll gladly go and hit the limiter at 7,000 every time I hit it. It's very quick. I'm, I'm impressed. I didn't expect that. Possibly the best thing about the car is how stable it feels on the highway. You're riveted to the tarmac, and in a straight line, almost regardless of what speed you're going at, traction, grip, everything is amazing. I love it. Traction control is standard on this model actually and you can deactivate it. In slippery conditions like this with the 18 inch winter tires, it may be best to turn them off because the brakes will overheat. I actually did experience that yesterday when the snow started to fall. Otherwise, I'm very impressed with the drive of this car. The cabin of the Mazda 6 is a thing of beauty. There's a lot of things I do like about it and one of it is its size. It's not too big and it's not too small so you feel really like you're one with the car. Now the first thing you'll notice is very comfortable seats, great support, lumbar and for your legs and even lateral support. Steering wheel is quite nice as well, grip is good, the feeling is good, tilt and telescopic column. Uh, the dash materials quite nice as well, the assembly is top notch, a lot, of them are, uh, a lot of the plastics are padded, very smooth to the touch. The only thing maybe that could be potentially wrong with the interior of the car is the center portion all the buttons are the same texture, the same look, and they're all this piano black finish. When they light up at night, it's not so bad. When you're driving around during the day, you really have to look down to see what's what. But I guess you get used to it after a while. The look is incredible, but maybe for some people who may have a harder time figuring out what is what, it may take a little bit longer, and it could be maybe headache causing. I don't know. Uh, the navigation actually flips up from the top of the dash when you turn it on. It works quite well. The menu though is a little bit more complicated because there's no room for the actual controls somewhere on the dashboard. So what Mazda devised is a small remote control located on the center column, console, sorry, where you can actually remove it or use it in its place. So if you don't know, there are a few buttons, but if you don't know which one is, you really have to look down to see which one you're pressing on and you have to look back up on the screen to see what you're doing. You can get used to it. You should stop anyhow if you're going to use a navigation system. Otherwise, it works quite well. Front leg room is pretty good. Elbow room as well. Head room is good enough for the 95th percentile of everyone. If you're well over six feet, it might be tall, uh, a little bit tight. Rear leg room is okay. Same thing for elbow room, although three adults sitting in the rear, it's going to be a little bit tight. The trunk itself is very nicely finished. It's roomy. It's well appointed. The interior is very nice of this car. I do enjoy it. The Mazda 6 is not only amazing to drive, but it actually looks really good. I think as far as station wagons are concerned, nothing can touch it except if you go up, and I mean way up in price. With the 18 inch wheels, the blacked out tail lights and headlights, the spoiler, everything, the look really has it going for it. I, I can imagine someone driving around, for example, in a Taurus wagon and being very envious of you in your very hot Mazda 6 wagon. Now, typically Mazda products are fairly re reliable. Uh, maintenance costs are maybe average to slightly above average. My biggest concern really and only with this car is that in the past, Mazda 
had some problems with their automatic transmission. This is an all-new six-speed automatic transmission. At the moment, it, it works beautifully. It shifts crisply, very, uh, very, it knows what it's doing. We'll have to wait and see what the future holds for it. However, you do have a five-year, 100,000 kilometer powertrain coverage. So if anything should happen, it'll probably happen in that period. So you don't really have much to worry about.